Welcome back. In this video, we are going to implement the UI as well as the score system. So we want to see the points that we have or the score that we have. And we also later on want to store the best score. So our high score at the same time. So you can see here at the top left hand side, you have a big number that is the score. And then we have a smaller number, which is the record. And we're going to implement it in a similar way in our game. Now, of course, you can go ahead and try to add this UI to your game yourself, but you will also need to create a game manager, which will take care of the score. So it will hold the score, it will update the UI as well as it will update the score. So it will need a method that will allow us to update the score. So let's go ahead and create a new script and a new game manager inside of our game. Therefore, we need to create a empty game object. I'm going to call this one game manager. And then this game manager will be reset. So let's set that to 000. That's always good practice. And now inside of scripts, let's go ahead and create a new script. I see sharp script that I'm going to call game manager. You will see that you have this gear now or this gear wheel and that indicates that this is a special script. So this is our game manager script. Let's make sure that this game manager script is added to our game manager here. Now, before we implement the game manager, let's go ahead and create a text here. So let's use text inside of canvas and I'm going to call this one score text. Now you can see that the score text is here in the center. It says new text. Let's change it to zero and let's change its font size to be 100 because then it will be a lot bigger. Of course, we cannot see it anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I overflow my paragraph. So horizontal overflow and vertical overflow. Then you can see the number again. Now let's make sure that the preset will be at the top left hand side. And then we can set the value to zero, zero, which will now put it at the very top left. So we can barely see it. Well, we cannot actually see it, but it's going to be just here at this edge. Okay, so if we want to see it, we need to change the positions here. So first of all, the X position to let's say 100, and there we are. So it's going to be a little further to the right. And then the Y position may be at minus 30 or minus 50 or so. This should be good, maybe even 150 for the position. So it will start here at this point. Now what's important is that the alignment should be towards the left. So Thing is, if you have a long number now, let's say the player breaks all records and gets this huge number, we definitely want to make sure that the number will still appear correctly because if you use alignment towards the center, then it would cut off after a while. Okay, so here with one zero, it's fine, but then the more zeros you have or the more numbers you have, the bigger the record is, the worse it will become. So make sure that the alignment is towards the left. It is by default, but just so you are aware of that situation here. Now let's change the color and this gray color might be fine, but unfortunately it doesn't look too good with our game. So I'm going to use this orange here. And what I'm also going to add is going to be an outline. So there is this component called outline and you can add that, which will give your text an outline effect. So now if you use this black color as we have here, it will create an outline surrounding the number. You can see it a little better if the font size is bigger. So here you can now see this black line. If we were to deactivate it, it's not there. Well, it's pretty thin. So you can change the effect by changing the effect distance, which will change the effect just a slight bit. Okay, so now we have the outline. Of course, I don't want to have a font size of 300. 100 will be fine. This will be my score text. And now let's duplicate that and call this one high score text, like so. And now this high score text should have, let's say a font of 70 maybe. Well, that's too little, let's use 80 roughly. And the text should be best colon zero, zero, something like this. Okay, now let me change its position. So let's drag the position Y down a bit like so, and see what would be a good value. So probably something around 170, 180, something like that, maybe even 200. Yeah, minus 200 seems like a valid number here. So let's use the Y position of minus 200. So now we will have our high score, which currently probably is too much. Let's just use four zeros like so, or maybe even just one zero because it starts at zero. And the best score will also be just 
zero for now. And this number will grow as well as this number will grow. So now you can, of course, play around with the values. You can change the color to your liking and all of that. But I'm going to save my game like so. So my current scene. Okay, now let's actually change these numbers with our game manager. We won't need the start method, neither will we need the update method. What we will need, however, is going to be our score text. So public int score as well as the score text. So public text, and this doesn't exist unless we add unity engine dot UI. So this namespace, and now we can use the score text. Now you could of course also go ahead and add the high score text while you're at it. So high score text like so, or maybe just with as a lower cap S. So here inside of the game manager, I'm going to have a public method that I'm going to call increase score because we want to be able to increase the score using the game manager. The game manager will be a game object that will be available throughout the entire game. So let's make sure that we increase the score in here by using this plus equal. So whatever it was before plus whatever we're adding here. So let's actually add an integer here, which will be added points, for example, like so. And let's use those added points to add to the score. And now let's make sure that our score text dot text property will be the score. Now score is of course an integer. So we need to make sure that it will be turned into a string. Okay, now let's save this script. And let's go back to our game. Let's click check our game manager out. So let's go over here. And you can see we need to assign a score text. So let's get it from the scene score text, double click on it, and then the high score text. Okay, while we're not using them as of now, let's see what happens. Once we set the value to 10. Well, we will see that nothing will happen. Because the score text will not be set to 10 unless we get a score. So we are only changing the score text, if you recall, once we call this increase score method. But whenever calling this method, what would be a good spot to call this method? What do you think? Well, I would say inside of my fruits, inside of the create sliced fruit. So each time we're creating a sliced fruit, it makes sense for us to also increase the score. So here, find object of type is an option where we simply search for a game manager like so. And then we can call its methods, for example, the increase score method, and we can assign, let's say a three to it. So we are saying add three points to the score every single time that we're creating a sliced fruit, which happens once we destroy a fruit, right? Once we cut the fruit. So this here, is fine code inside of our create slice fruit method because we are finding an object based on its name. But this method here is quite resource heavy. So this is not something that you should overdo. You shouldn't use this find object of type inside of uh, the update method because it could really slow down your game. Okay, so find object of type game manager increase score is an option to do it. So you don't need to create a game manager property here. So you, you could have done that once in the start method, of course, as well. So here start like so. And inside of the start method, you could have also found the game manager once. So here, public game manager GM or my GM, like so, and then assign the my GM based on find object of type game manager like so. And then you can use here my GM, of course, instead. Okay, so these are multiple different ways. Here you would just do it once and you don't have to do it ever again. But then to be honest, inside of our create sliced fruit, we are only calling this very rarely and we're also slicing the fruit only once. So the amount of times that this find object of type will be called is pretty much the same, no matter whether we do it like I do it here uh, right now, or whether we do it like I did it before. Okay, like find object of type directly inside of the slice method. Okay, so either way is fine, but just make sure that you're not overusing this method, find object of type inside of the update method, for example. Because while well, the update method is called quite a bit, the same goes for the fixed update and late update, of course. So now at this point, let's actually run the game. 
and we should be able to score now. So let's see if that's the case. So let's destroy fruits and you can see, well, we start at 10 because, well, I assigned 10 here in the game manager. So let's set that to zero and let's run it again. Let's see if it's going to increase the number and you see it increases the number by three every single time. Okay, now this is a way how to do it. Another way would be that you define directly in the game manager how many points slicing a fruit will give. But doing it how we did it now allows us to give different amounts of points every single time. So now, of course, it would make sense to have here the public. And by the way, the game manager doesn't have to be public, so we can make it private because we're never using it outside of it. But here, public and score amount would be an option. So here, which will be an integer, of course, public and score amount. And we could assign that to be three, for example. And now here, instead of having this magical number three, we are going to use score amount. So now what we can do is we can define per fruit how many points we're going to add for every sliced fruit that we're destroying. So let's say for the banana, you get three points. For the oranges, you get five points and so forth. So you can define that now. All right, so that's it for this video. Now you know how to use the game manager, how to add the UI, and we have a running game already. Of course, we are not storing the score yet, and we have a lot more to do still. So see you in the next video.